Hey, Dave, what's going on? I'm just scrolling through some of these messages here over on uh, Patreon. Find anything good? Well, this is kind of interesting. Someone wants us to do a character build based off Inflict Wounds. That could work. There are a lot of different ways to use that spell. Yeah, absolutely. So let's bring the pain with this Adventurer's League legal D&D character build. Welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. And as usual, I'm hanging out with this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. Hey, is this your first time visiting Ted's basement? If so, it's a place where we like to talk about news, views, and homebrews for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes we even talk about other role-playing games. So if you don't want to miss a single video, then don't forget to crit hit that subscribe button and to tune to that notification bell. All right. Like we said on the Patreon, we had a suggestion for, you know, for a video, a character build based off of using Inflict Wounds. So as usual, we're going to have a character sheet from D&D Beyond for you guys to check out, as well as we will have the character build guide. You'll get the links in the description so you can go check those out. I guess, you know, let's get get into it. Let's start with... All right, uh, so, so first, let's look at, at the spell itself. If we want to make a character who is going to be using Inflict Wounds as their primary, you know, method of attack. You kind of have to look at, you know, what that spell is and, you know, what kind of person is going to get behind something like that. All right, so let's look at that spell. You know, it, it's a it's a spell that does 3 die 10 and it's pumpable, so you can do a lot with it. But if it's inflicting wounds, you know, regardless of, you know, what kind of thing it is, you're someone that, as you talked, you know, about in the beginning, this is someone who likes to inflict pain. Yeah, or at least they have the tolerance for it at any rate. One of the first things I would say we have to look at is who can actually do this, right? Who gets the spell? We know clerics can do it. Uh, we know that sorcerers of a certain persuasion can do it. And I believe bards could possibly do it as well. Absolutely. That automatically excludes most sorcerers, totally excludes wizards. No druid is going to be cast in this spell. So it kind of limits what we can do. <clears throat> that, that is true. So if we went cleric, you'd be able to get a variety of different things with it. If you went sorcerer, you'd get some interesting options, though. Yes, I, I don't think it'd be completely interesting if our... I don't think it would ne be nearly as interesting if we went with Cleric as our primary way of inflicting wounds. So I think we're going to go Divine Soul from Sorcerer, and we're going to take the Evil Infinity. Now, technically, you don't actually have to be evil to take that Infinity. So if you are playing in Adventures League, you know, you can be whatever alignment you want to. Maybe you're chaotic, neutral, and just really weird in a dark way yeah it's 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 looking at it as you know your heritage happens to come from something that's evil you can be whatever you want but you happen to get inflict wounds from your evil affinity next let's look at our race and then our background and our ability scores since we already know we're going to start off with sorcerer divine soul all right well if we're going to go with sorcerer then we really should be looking at something that's going to offer us a nice charisma bonus absolutely and uh, you know we have some ideas for things that we want to do with this character build so for that we're going to also need some other stats that are a minimum of 13s so the more pluses we can get the better well if you want more pluses the best way to go about doing that that's to go with half elf that's true there is literally only one other option that would give us more pluses but it'll also give us pluses where we don't necessarily need them all right so we've got half elf and we're obviously going to be focused very much on charisma and that's going to be able to help us through skills when we get to that point as well yeah absolutely we can talk about our skill choices for half elf because we get two extras in addition and we also get another language as well so you know perhaps this this character kind of started off on a more positive bent or you know maybe they went straight into you know the the darker arts right away so for for this particular one we went with religion medicine as our skills for half elf and our racial language we went with celestial you want to say why well i you know because it's the we're going divine soul i think celestial really works and also they're into the scripture they're because of religion and medicine we took because maybe you know maybe they they're into you know examining how the body works anatomy 
uh, maybe they took a wrong turn with one too many autopsies. I don't know. But, you know, that's what we're going to start off with it. You know, before we get to the background, as a half elf, we get our plus two to charisma and we get two floating plus ones. We're actually going to end up putting them in intelligence and wisdom. This is going to be a very mental stat heavy character. We'll get into why later with that. But speaking of background, we're going to go with Sage on it. And specifically when you have the this different specialties, we really felt that the discredited academic would work really well for this character. So with, with that, we're going to get access to um, two languages, which we took Abyssal and Infernal. And you know this is where this, this this character winds up getting discredited because he starts researching you know things that they really shouldn't be. We also wind up you know going with you know the skills Arcana and History. So you know what else is magical? No, Ted, tell me what else is magical. The ultimate bestiary, the Dreaded Curse for Fifth Edition. Yeah, it just went up on on Kickstarter by Nord Games. They put out amazing, awesome Kickstarters. Huge fan of them. Their ultimate Beastry Revenge of the Horde is actually how we kind of came across them. We backed it. It was a great monster book, but they're not your typical traditional monster books. It's not an A to Z tons of monsters. No, they specifically, you know, focus in on one type of monster and really flesh them out. They flesh them out. They give you a whole bunch of new options. You know, looking at the Kickstarter page, I am really excited. Uh, I've always been a fan of were creatures and they've got lycan lycanthropes in there. So I'm eager to see what they're going to do with that. But, you know, there is also a lot of undead and, you know, I've seen skeletons and zombies before. I've seen liches and mummies before, but there's a whole section on will o' the wisps and I think they're an overlooked monster that are really great. So I'm, I'm eager to see what they wind up doing with that. I, I've got the Kickstarter up right on my phone right now, and I was completely blown away by the very first image that you see. That cover art is The sweet. cover art is freaking amazing. Uh, you know, you pointed out some of the monsters are going to be in there, and there's going to be so many more, but I'm looking at the stretch goals that they have that, that haven't been unlocked yet, but I'm sure... In short, <laughs> or, short order, they will be. There is a ton of them that they already have planned. Mongrel folk, animated oh. objects, dread beasts, more artwork, undead player options. Who isn't going to want that? Encounter tables, more artwork, lair maps, monster hunter journals. So... I hope they unlock them all. Plus, if the their last Kickstarter was any indication, shouldn't be a problem. I am excited about this book. There's going to be so many cool things, especially if you want to run an undead-based campaign or a creepy game, or maybe you want to play darker characters. There's going to be options for that. Well, Nord, Nord always knocks it out of the park with their books, so... No, you should, you should definitely look into this one. Yeah, go down to the description. There's going to be a link for for this Kickstarter. As always, this is a sponsored video from our sponsored Nord Games. We want to thank them, and you can help out the channel by checking out that Kickstarter. All right, so let's let's get into it. We've talked about our race, we've talked about our background, and we've said that we're going to start off with Sorcerer. What are we looking for our starting stats? Are we doing an array? We're going to do a point by. We're actually going to do a point by on this one. We're going to go crazy. We're going to put. You know, we're going to put a 14 in our charisma. We are going to drop two 12s into our intelligence and wisdom. So right now we only have bonuses. And then strength, we're going to, that's going to be our dump stat with a 10. And then we're going to double up on 13s in our decks and constitution. So we're actually going to create using a point buy and we're going to start off with four 13s. You're, yes. You're going crazy on me, Dave. Yes, we are. Four 13s and a 14. We have no negatives. Four, that 14 becomes a 16 from the half elf. It, it does. So, yeah, you know, when, when we do some of these builds, it's a lot of fun to do something a little bit different and not just like completely always optimize our stats. Plus, you know, I think this guy needs to have a little bit of muscle mass to him, a little bit of strength because I think he's like moving around and carting around corpses and they ain't light. So th this winds up giving us, you know, pluses or, you know, straight, uh, you know, across the board for, for 10 and strength. So we're not going to deal with any minuses, which, which has a little, little bit of fun. So this is an above average, you know, person. It is, absolutely. They are exceptional in their own way. So with that, uh, at first level, we are going to take sorcerer we're going divine soul as we mentioned our infinity is going to be for evil because we want inflict wounds absolutely so we're going to wind up with favor of the gods which you know you get from sorcerer but we're also going to have to choose our sorcerer skills yes we are good point ted 
Uh, so we're going to wind up going with Deception and Intimidation. So this character has already proceeded past the point where they've been kicked out of the, the wizard school. Academia. Of academia because of the things that they're bringing up, the things that they're researching. And it is only through trial and error that they wind up unlocking their sorcerer's powers. And lo and behold... They're, they're kind of a little intimidating. They're going to have to be, you know, personable and be able to lie when they need to, to get into areas that they have to, or, you know, get away from people that they don't want getting them. I totally see this guy or gal passing themselves off as a physician. And I'm definitely channeling a little bit of Jack the Ripper on this one. That's a bit of an evil <laughs> vibe. But I mean, when you look at it from possibly making an NPC later, it's a great place to start. Yeah, you're going to have to rain back a little bit if you're playing adventures league you can just be creepy i suppose so what we're going to do is we're going to take our first four levels in uh sorcerer this winds up getting us a a bulk of things that we get to look at and we get to really focus heavily on getting access to our our spell inflict wounds by bum rushing four levels you know we wind up getting access to our um font of magic and meta magic abilities yeah we're going to want to take twin and quicken for those and we also get access to our first stat adjustment as well which we're going to do something we rarely do we're going to split it and we're going to put them in decks and we're going to also put it in two constitution but wait a second dave i thought you said this this character was very mental heavy now we got a 14 in decks and con we do and two 13s and uh <laughs> and a 16 so the reason for for that choice was, you know, to have them be a little bit more agile. Dex and Khan are great stats. Dave and I argue over uh, over this all the time as to which is the better stat. So getting more hit points and getting a better armor class, definitely no brainer there. Well, you know, he's been hefting those bodies to the morgue and at the morgue. I think it's really paying off. You know, it, it's making them healthier all the way around, bringing up that constitution. And, you know, staying one step ahead of the law has also helped with that dexterity. So the, uh, you know, the, the sorcerer's abilities that they get, you know, you've got the ability to spend those points, your, your sorcery points wisely, whether you want to be able to, you know, build extra first level spell slots for your inflict wounds or use those abilities to, you know, quicken or twin. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get the double the pleasure or pain as the case may be, be, or you can get it off faster. We were really torn with taking distant. But for reasons we did not, which we're going to get into actually really soon. So from here, I think we're going to jump into Cleric. Cleric is a uh, bit of a, you know, we, we know that, that this character is somewhat religious, you know, speaking celestial, has the religion skill. Uh, but what are we looking to take from Cleric? We already said that we don't want to inflict from there. What, what are we doing? So we want that channel divinity from the grave domain. Obviously, it's going to take us two levels to get there. But Path to the Grave is super super fearsome as an action you're able to you know cause a creature to be vulnerable to your next attack well we're doing three die ten with those inflict wounds six die ten points of damage that's using it as a first level spell and that doesn't incorporate if suppose i don't know you happen to crit or something you know that's a lot of damage and also because we have quicken we could do both in the same round if we wanted to that is pretty harsh there dave now, the other thing we're going to get as an added benefit is access and proficiency in light armor, medium armor, and shields. That's going to be huge for this character survivability. We don't have access to any armor as a sorcerer, and you know, all told, this character is not going to get a lot of weapons. That is true, but you know, it doesn't need to. It's just going to, it's just going to rock that bad touch. <laughs> All right, so fifth and sixth level, we're looking at taking Cleric to, to get that ability. Are we going to go back to Sorcerer for seventh level, or are we going somewhere else? No, this actually lends itself to why we did not take that distance spell. We're going to actually go to Wizard for two two levels, because we want the Wizard tradition necromancy. Well, obviously, because we just took Path to the Grave. Isn't that, isn't that where that leads, to Necromancer? <laughs> In this case, it absolutely <laughs> does. Uh, we're going to get some really cool things. One, we're going to be able to take the spell Find Familiar. So now we can have our Familiar deliver our touch spells. If you go with an Al Familiar, it has Flyby Attack. If you go, you know, the more thematic would be like a Raven or a Crow. They're probably going to get wasted a lot and you're going to have to constantly resummon them. You could ask your DM, visually, could it look like a Crow or a Raven, but can I use the Owl statistics? And most DMs, I think, are going to allow that. 
Yeah, or if, you know, or even if you just color your owl as a black rat owl and it looks kind of evil anyway. Red eyes glowing. <laughs> yeah, you could work it out. But anyway, that is going to give you the ability to deliver touch spells. So now we're going to have a a really great range on that in, inflict wound spell if we need it for whatever reason. Absolutely. That's only level one. Level two, we get our necromancy tradition, and that's what we're looking for in, because we want Grim Harvest. What Grim Harvest is going to do is when you kill something using a spell, you get that spell level in hit points back. Now, if it's a necromancy spell, you get three times the level back. So that's really sweet. As a first level spell, you only get three hit points, but you can always bump it up, you know, second level, six, nine. Quickly, they start adding up, and you're doing a lot of damage, especially when you bump the spell up. Try killing things with it, not that hard, and especially if you hit them with that channel divinity ability first. Absolutely. So from here, you know, we, we've already said that, you know, from the beginning that we were looking at a mental heavy. We went with those 13s in intelligence and wisdom so that we would be able to meet the requirements for cleric and wizard but we're only planning to do those two level dips to get those specific abilities. After this, we're going to bum rush sorcerer primarily because we want you know as many sorcery points as possible to to get into those meta magic abilities and to be able to create more spell slots. Yeah, absolutely. And we're not going to go into like all of our spell choices and stuff like that cuz really we designed this character to do one thing, inflict wounds. Inflict wounds and they're going to do it in a plethora of different ways now. All right, so from here, you know, as I said, we are going to go with just sorcerer for the rest, you know, primarily because we want those sorcery points, um, you know, and we want to be able to use them for our meta magic abilities or recreating spell slots. Yeah, absolutely. At six levels of sorcery, empowered healing, we really don't care about that that much. This guy is less about healing, more about damage. But it's there in case you need it. Uh, way back when, when we took the Grave Domain, we also got Spare the Dying. We actually like that one for this character because he's a bit sadistic and uh, he doesn't want you to expire too soon. You know, so that comes in handy. Now at 8th level, that's the next time we're going to take something that's going to actually really matter to this character. And what are we going to choose here? This is our ASI, but instead of taking a stat increase, we're actually going to take a feat. Uh, what feat do we want to take here, Dave? Uh, we want Warcaster, because we're already good at damaging people and using our spells. Well, just in case we happen to be concentrating and we want to maintain that concentration, it's going to help. But more importantly, now if you try and get away from us, we can use that attack of opportunity as a spell instead. It's another opportunity for us to, to inflict. Yes, to inflict more wounds. All right, so, uh, you know... From here, we get to 10th level, and we have another another choice for our meta magic abilities. Yeah, uh, we do. And this time we went subtle, because sometimes you want to inflict wounds, but, you know, you don't want people counterspelling you. You don't want to be interrupted when you're doing it. Or sometimes this character can be a little sneaky, and they want to get it off without being detected. I see this as a character who, at this point in time, has this has progressed quite a lot in power and in their you know sadism so you could really just be like all right i'm in town and i'm gonna just cast this spell and just you know as i'm walking by i just brush somebody and they quiver in pain potentially dying you know if you're doing it to commoners yeah absolutely or you know hey buddy what's going on and their chest explodes <laughs> <laughs> like a chest burster coming out you know but yeah it's a brutal spell and now we can be brutal and subtle at the same time absolutely so from here you know there's not a whole lot built into sorcerer we're not getting into spell spell choices because we've already got our focus so from here we're just going to bump up our charisma getting it up to 20 you know this is going to allow us to lie better to have higher bonuses to hit higher dcs for our spells you know and uh you know when we want to be intimidating we got the charisma to make it happen. Absolutely. So uh, with that, what we like to do after we build the character build, and you can follow along, like we said, with the character sheet or check out the guide. Uh, that is, look at how would we use this as the dungeon master? What kind of NPC would this be? And I think you guys kind of get the vibe of where we're going, right? <laughs> So we already made mention, you know, that this is a, you know, Jack the Ripper. So this is, this could easily be, you know, one of those, you know, adversaries that you set up early on 
and the players are doing an urban game and you have to try and figure out what's going on. You know, perhaps this guy, because they've got ranks in medicine, you know, has lied his way into, you know, being the physician or being, you know, the, the person working behind the scenes that they're talking to on a regular basis. You know, they're communicating with and they're like, oh, I can't tell you what happened here. This is clearly not done by, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, weapon or tool. You know, this has got to be through magic and they're just lying their teeth off, you know, that, uh, that they have no clue because they're the ones doing it. Yeah, I can absolutely see them, like, going to the coroner, and it's this guy, right? And, like, he's working in the coroner's office, examining the bodies. That's part of his physician duties. At the same time, he's also the one dropping the bodies. I think it would be a lot of fun. Or you could play this character as more of almost like your traditional necromancer type character because they are harnessing the powers of life and death. It's just instead of using it to animate dead which they could be doing so, uh, on some occasions but they're just using it to rip things apart and maybe that's part of what they like to do they like to figure out how things work and that's why they like to take apart bodies and that's kind of where it all went wrong for them so you you could you know build this up into a a larger thing depending upon how you wanted to scale the npc you know but it could be something where like there are flesh golems zombies and skeletons you know that are lurking out of town as he's slowly you know building up this this army of of undead and creatures so that at some point in time he can be like you know all right this uh academia that that kicked me out out. I will have my revenge and he brings the horde you know in on them you know so you could have a, a lot of fun depending upon what aspect of this guy you wanted to focus on yeah so if you wanted to go with master urban necromancer that works or if you want to go with this is just a serial killer and it's going to be a mystery for the players to figure out and depending on how powerful you want to make them it may be a really tough battle maybe they keep getting away maybe they track them from city to city uh, maybe even better would be for them to have come from a previous city and and seen this this individual's handiwork and now it's starting to happen again and you know so they start putting together the pieces and put together a nice murder mystery adventure absolutely hey if you enjoyed this video i want to invite you to join the nerdarchy adventuring party over on patreon hey ted what can they find over there Every month, we're creating brand new products that you can be able to put into your game, both as a player and as a DM. And don't forget, as well, we also do monthly giveaways that we automatically enter our patrons in. But, you know, while you're right there, Dave, that's not all. We also do, you know, weekly hangouts with certain levels of, of patron, and that's just a small bit of what we're doing over there. So why don't you go check it out? So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.